So I will state the obvious. All of us are navigating an incredibly difficult time in history, and a lot of people are working for the first time in a situation that I've been in for the past six or seven years, and they're trying to figure out how to be their most productive and mentally healthy while working from home. Well, friends, I have a thing or two to say about that. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and for once, I am not teaching you anything about poi. Instead, I'm spending just a little bit of time telling you all how I have found ways to make working from home work for me, and hopefully uh, be able to make it work for you as well. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So I have worked from home and been my own boss now for I think something in the order of like six or seven years. And I remember when that first started off, it was definitely a rough transition for me too. Um, I had, you know, my entire adult life been working in offices, had a boss, and everything, and all of a sudden I was responsible not just for motivating myself, but also for trying to get work done in an environment that a lot of times didn't seem that terribly conducive to getting work done. And the thing is, is that I got so good at it over the years that now as we're negotiating the COVID-19 pandemic, um, functionally there's been almost no difference in my day-to-day -day life uh, as a result of the lockdown and the quarantine and everything which I think is probably both a good thing and a bad thing, but it's also meant that this has been an adjustment that hasn't been that terribly difficult for me. So with that in mind, I know a lot of you out there are struggling and I would like to share some of my secrets with you all so that hopefully you can adapt to this time a little bit quicker because I don't think any of us know how long it's gonna last for. And to be perfectly frank with you, these are likely skills that are gonna come in handy even after the quarantine is done. So I'm gonna start this off with the following tip make and stick to a routine. I know a lot of us, when we start working for home, we get in this place mentally where we're just kind of like, oh, well, shoot, I don't have to shower. I don't have to eat lunch at the same time. I can do whatever I want. I can wake up and watch cartoons if I want to, rather than getting straight to work and everything. And that feels very tempting because it seems like something that like, oh, I wish I could have done this the entire time. There's just one problem. It's a trap. And I think the reason for this is that a lot of us look at routine as being a negative thing. We look at it as being kind of humdrum and boring. We look at it as being suffocating rather than something that creates structure in our world. I make it a point every single morning, number one, to try and wake up at about the same time. Number two, make sure that I eat breakfast and uh, take a shower before I start working and everything. I try to separate out what is the work life from the rest of my life and everything. And one of those things that that does for me is by having that regular routine and that regular ritual for starting my day, it actually helps prepare my brain for when I do go to work. Rather than there being just like chaos and hodgepodge and everything, my brain can more easily slot into, okay, it's time to start getting these tasks done. In addition, when you're working from home, there's also a danger that the work time and the personal time start to bleed together. This is a thing that I struggle with constantly. But one thing that I have found helps is to create rituals both to start work as well as to end it. There's a little thing that you can do at the end of the day that tells you, okay brain, it is time to finally disconnect and just have my me time. If possible, set up a home office in a space that is separate from your recreation, living, and food prep areas and everything. If for no other reason than when you leave that physical area, it is going to help contribute to this process. Cool, my next tip for you, make deadlines. And I know you're thinking as I'm saying that, well, Drex, it just sounds like you're recreating all of the things that suck about the normal work environment, but at home. And yes, I am, and that's the point. So many of those structures may feel like they just squeeze the creativity out of us, but the thing is, is that they're also there to support us and they're also there to make sure that we keep on getting things done. So even if there's an external source that is making deadlines for you, I still think that it's a good exercise to make deadlines for yourself. Be self-motivated on this. Create the structure for yourself that is going to support yourself. And it can just be as simple as, okay, I'm going to make sure that I have finished going through my inbox by such and such a time in the morning, 
or you know, hey, um, I have the rough draft of this thing that is due in a couple weeks, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I get the first page of it done in the next two days and everything. This is stuff that there's not necessarily somebody breathing down your neck for it, but if you set these deadlines for yourself and everything, it gives you something to shoot for and it helps create that structure for you. Part of why this is key is when you're working at home, there's nobody to look over your shoulder, so there's no inherent directive for you to be getting stuff done regularly. And you know, one of those things that really subconsciously ties into this is, you know, when you're in a workplace and everything and your coworkers in X cubicle over and everything, sometimes hearing that they're working on a thing will remind you, oh, I have to get this thing done too. You have to start taking responsibility for making those things happen without the environment around you. And in addition, the ability to be self-motivated like this is actually really, really helpful no matter what your career is going to be and no matter what your work environment looks like. It's going to be something that supervisors are going to notice even when you go back to work. Being self-motivated is absolutely one of those things that is going to help you in any workplace. Hey, so might as well work on the habit now, right? Next up take care of your space. This is really, really crucial because when you're at home the entire day working, it becomes very, very easy for you to just say, okay, well, you know, my living space may be a little messy and everything, but I've got X, Y, and Z thing to do, or there's this movie that I wanna watch, or, you know, Tiger King or what have you, and you know what, I'm just gonna do the dishes later, or, you know, I'm gonna clean up the living room later and everything. And the thing is, is that having a messy work environment and a messy living environment is going to contribute to stress and anxiety. You may think that it's one of those things that it's like, oh, it's such a pain in the butt to do the cleaning or this or this or that. And the thing is, is that once you get it done and everything, it's going to have a massive impact on your mental health and your ability to focus. There is absolutely a connection between a messy workspace and a disorganized mind. Make sure that you're keeping both organized and doing so regularly. In addition, this is also a great reason to take a break from work. It can be really, really helpful, especially when you don't have physical coworkers to interact with, to have cues that tell you to stop working for a little while and take a break. Otherwise you get burnt out, right? Now, having to go and do the dishes for a few minutes or fold the laundry or what have you is great for this because not only does it force you to take that break, but also it gets your living environment much more organized in the process. And for all of you artists out there who are insisting that having a messy living space is integral to your creative process, I have been you. Guess what? In the long term, you're wrong. You're going to have to clean up every once in a while. Just saying. All right, this next one is a little bit tricky given the situation that we find ourselves in right now, but honestly, it is really important to get outside every once in a while. Now, part of this goes into kind of compartmentalizing environments and everything, like we talked about with the idea of having a home office that's in a separate space from your recreational space and everything. Leaving your apartment or home for a few minutes every day is gonna help you clear your mind, and more important, it's gonna be exercise. The fresh air is gonna do you good. Now that said, observe physical and social distancing and wear a damn mask because I'm getting really, really sick of seeing y'all out there without them. It's driving me nuts. Plus which, having recreational activities that you can go to to kind of like let your body and brain relax from a day of work and everything are super important. Even to artistic workers such as myself that spend all of their time doing creative tasks and everything. Um, and hey, as it turns out, one of those things that's really, really good for letting go of that stress is poi spinning. And uh, this is where I put in the plug to say, hey, if you'd like to learn how to do this during the COVID-19 outbreak and everything, I've been teaching daily tutorials and I'm going to link to that in the description uh, because I want to get more of you out there spinning. And seriously, um, I have been doing it now for 13 years and it is still my go-to way to unwind at the end of the day. Going outside and spinning for an hour is a great way for me to digest everything that's just happened in my day. And my final tip, and yes, I know that this is complicated given our current situation and everything, but it's to stay connected. Regardless of whether you are working from home, working for yourself, etc., having human contact is incredibly important. And you know, this can take the form of FaceTime calls or Zoom dates. Maybe you prefer to just talk to people over the phone rather than seeing a visual. Um, I know that seeing myself speak can sometimes be really distracting. Um, 
Also, there are a lot of event companies here in DC that have been transitioning over into doing uh, live stream events and everything. And I found it's really nice to be able to still get some of the feeling of these events that I've been enjoying, but doing so from the comfort of my own home. I'll link to a couple of these down in the description and everything, the ones that are my favorites at least. And hey, again, the good thing is, is that because we're all doing this online and everything, it doesn't matter where you are, all of these resources will still work for you, right? Um, it's also one of those things that connecting with other people can sometimes get you outside of your head. Sometimes we get on little loops inside of our head and the voice that we're most used to listening to is our own. It can be really helpful to get another set of ears on a problem or simply to just be involved in the collaborative process with other people of talking about something or solving a problem and everything. All these things are good things and they're good for you mentally. And here's the thing, I know that a lot of you out there are really struggling right now with even finding the motivation to do a lot of these things. Whether you happen to be on the more extroverted end of the spectrum and it's helpful to just like have the social energy of other people just in order to get you know, your engines going and everything, or whether it's you're dealing with anxiety or depression or anything like that, it can be really, really difficult to make a lot of these choices and actions happen. Now, I don't know what your particular scenario is in this regard, but what I will say is pick one or two items off of this list and see if you can make them happen today. And I guarantee they will help at least a little bit. And hopefully that will give you some resources to work with to be able to get better and work on getting the other items into your life, yeah? So I hope that you all out there are staying both physically and mentally healthy. Um, interestingly enough, this has been a period that I have found to be paradoxically incredibly inspiring and motivating and everything. There's been something about the isolation that has been a great opportunity for me to spend a lot of time thinking about the future and what I want that to look like for both myself and others and everything. And sometimes the ideas come to me faster than I can even write them down. Um, I hope that you all can find your way to a place where likewise this isolation gives you the opportunity to reflect and be able to focus your energies on things that truly matter to you and everything. Um, I pray that that can happen for all of y'all out there. And of course, for those of you that are suffering, you have my sympathies and I hope that something in this video will help you get to a place where you are more healthy and more productive. Um, and with that, I'm gonna say take care of yourselves and take care of each other out there. We are all in this together. So if you got anything out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you would make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And who knows, maybe you will help somebody else who's a friend that's struggling uh, be able to find their way into a healthier place by doing so. And of course, I just wanna put a huge shout out out there to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. They make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Um, if you'd like to sign up to support the work that I do, and believe me, now of all times, I totally understand if that's not in your means. But if you're getting value out of the things that I'm putting out on my channel and everything, um, I would strongly suggest that you sign up to support this work over on Patreon. Uh, the address for that is patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You'll get early access to all of my content as well as a vote in topics that I tackle in the future. Um, it also is what is allowing me to pay rent and get groceries at this point. So um, if you can, I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And hey, did you get anything out of this video? Were any of these tips helpful to you? Do you have other tips about being productive when you're working from home and everything? Please let me know down in the comments and let me know if you would like to see me do more informal vlog style videos like this on the weekends during the outbreak and everything. Cause I do have ideas, but I'm already churning out a lot of content. But if that content is useful to people, then I'm happy to keep on doing it.